We're going to the biggest flower horn facility you will ever see. Nobody has ever seen this place. A flower horn is a hybrid cichlid, which Asian people once thought were good luck, good wealth, good health. Look how small they are. These are baby flower horns? Yeah. We're going into the secret facility. You need to swipe. <laughs> My name is George. We're here with TC and David. We ran into these guys at the fish market like 12 hours ago. And now here we are in the middle of nowhere outside of Bangkok, Thailand. Looks like we're in a neighborhood. So like, where are we guys? We're in a neighborhood. This is a residential neighborhood. An undisclosed location. location. Top secret, highly classified. We're going into this building. Do you see how big this place is? Let me tell you that there will be no way in hell you will ever come here without that guy. Without that guy. It takes VIP. You need an OG. This is PA from Tag Team Crossbreed Thailand. He's one of the OG guys godfather flower horn breeders here in Thailand and it's only because of him that tonight you guys are about to see probably one of the craziest fish facilities that you've ever seen. This entire building is filled with fish and they're breeding different types of compo flower horn fish. What's up man? Who are you? Mr. Peapot. Mr. Peapot. Nice to meet you. George. TC is saying that this place no one has ever seen before. Is this true? I've seen it. I was not able to film it. You guys are going to be the first and exclusive to film this place. This is the library of Comfa Brood. Now that we got like five different characters in this video, Flowerhorn team assembled. Let's go check this thing out. One, two, three. Good, Good talk. talk. Onward. Let's go. Before we go inside, for people that don't know anything about the flower horn fish, give like a brief overview. A flower horn is a hybrid cichlid, which is crossed from many different types of cichlids, which Asian people once thought were good luck, good wealth, good health, and they would look for the lottery numbers within the purling. Some people in Singapore have found lottery numbers that hit the jackpot. They believe it's like a, a feng shui fish, a good luck fish. So this place is nuts. Come on, let's go. Wow. You know what the plastic bottles are, right? That's how you save money from buying another thousand tanks. This massive hallway full of these Hawaiian punch looking containers. What, what's going on here, David? So these are like one liter water containers. So instead of buying 1,000 tanks, you start to form the fry with these. And as they grow, you can scoop them out, check them out, see which ones need culling and which ones doesn't. And then eventually they move to the bigger tanks. So this is how you save a ton of money. What floor are we going to now? Chun Sam. Third floor. Chun Sam, the third floor. You need to swipe. Not gonna lie, this place is kind of eerie. Maybe it's just because we're here at night, but if you just look down this hallway, we got cages on the windows, and it feels a little bit more like an insane asylum than it does like a fish breeder. Amazing, right? You don't know if they're keeping something in or out. Oh, the workers live here in the facility. It's almost like they lock them in, you know what I mean? Flower horns, man, they're an aggressive fish. You gotta, you gotta cage them in. So they got rooms where they're growing out the females, and they got rooms where they're growing out the males. Okay, so these are all females, right? Breeding females. And you can figure out how often she lays by looking at the numbers and figuring out the days in between. So when you know her days are coming up, like a week or two weeks prior, you will put her in a tank in one of those cages. And that's where it starts. When they're, they're beginning to breed, you tilt that cage, remember? So you can see how they, they pair off good. If not, if she's being attacked, she can make her way to the cage. You can try to chase her and she'll have safe spots, right? What's the cycle? How does the cycle work? So this one, they've been tracking it since 60, which is 2017. So this is a pretty old female, 2020. This is September 4th. Next time, late again, was October 21st. Once a month, this fish, right? So this entire room is full of females. This is all females. All these fish are females. These are all breeding females. Unless they make trash fish, they're priceless. This is a big facility, so they're using a lot of females. It's where the magic happens. Wow. She just laid recently. She got the eggs on the side of the, the, glass. Side of the glass. Yeah. Is that the black compa? It's not quite. Black. Oh, this is a breeding pair right here. Oh, and that's the tube. That is the tube. So she dropped the eggs From out that of that. Well, once that tube gets thick and protruding, then within a few days, 
is going to drop. Before they separated the male and the female with the divider. Uh -huh. So they were not using the cage setup. This time they're using the divider. They got to know each other. They removed the divider as soon as the tube dropped. Now he's checking out the tube. You see? It's underneath. Yeah, he's checking her out. He wants to breathe. What about this pair? This is an insane pair right here. It's a compa breeding pair. Okay, so these are breeding king compa? Yeah. The male is F3 compa and the female is F1. What is this pair right here? Golden base pair. This is so yeah. crazy. These guys are shy. They are not used to the camera. You weren't lying. So this entire room is full of males. So we got a male room too. Okay, so these are breeding males. They're currently resting because they're not paired up. So eventually they will pair these up with many of the females that you saw over there to see what kind of pairs they make and what kind of pride comes out from it. To me, they look like retired pairs. I think the smaller ones, they're grooming to breed, but I think the bigger ones, I think a lot of them are retired. So interesting, so they just sit in here. They live the rest of their life or somebody takes them and houses them or whatever, but yeah. There's a black comfa right there. This is a black one? Yeah. All right, so this room is future females for breeding. Some of these probably already bred though, like stuff like this size. But the smaller ones, like over here, they're grooming them for future breeding. When they're young, a lot of the eggs, they turn white, they die, like stillbirths, you know? But once you get them to a big size where they're healthy enough, they'll pull out a lot more healthy eggs. So they're trying to grow out the females so that they can become the right size to like produce healthy offspring. Yeah, for the next generation. There's so many females. Do they need that many females? Yeah. They do. Yeah. They have to produce as many flowers. Not just want. that, but as we talked before, when females are breeding they stress a lot when they stress they can die so these are constantly to replace or replenish whatever dies or gets sick in one batch you get more females than males and normally ties will separate the females from the males and sell only the males so you don't get their genetic line breeding you know what I mean they keep the customer away from the females as much as possible all right so this entire room is basically filled with fish that are juveniles that they're grooming grooming means that they're trying to bring out some of the best qualities in these fish trying to make them more colorful more aggressive overall just better fish so they taped mirrors to every tank in this room. They're using the mirrors to make the flower horns think that there's another fish inside yeah. to want to fight itself. And this actually makes it more aggressive. And the more angry it gets, the bigger the head gets. So how long do they leave these mirrors on you? These ones, they leave 24 hours. Really? Yeah. Just to make them aggressive. All right, we're heading up to the fourth floor now. So you can see in this room, this is where they keep all of their little guys, all the little baby flower horns before they're ready to head to the grooming rooms where they groom them to be better, more mature adults. These are the fries. Yeah. Look how small they are. These are baby flower horns? Yeah. I think this is about like two weeks. Two weeks old. Yeah. There's so many of them. There's gotta be at least a few hundred baby flower horns in here. How many of these are gonna live? grow up to be healthy, big flower. For Kampa, about 70% of these are gonna be cult. They're just not the quality that, that they want, you know what so I mean? only 30% of all these babies are gonna grow up to be yeah. like cream of the crop, top of the line flower. The high price ones are like 5% or less. So there's a lot of culling that goes on here and different price ranges inside here. These are probably some of the earliest fry that they currently have here at this farm. They're only five days old. It's gonna be like one person of you that make it. These are probably a couple weeks old right here. These are maybe like a month old. And then these are like maybe like a month or two old. These are the parents and those are the babies. So literally all these parents are getting to watch their kids grow up. If this pair works out great, then they will continue to keep breeding the pair. If this pair shows a lot of cull, then they will find different pairs for both of them. They'll find different pairs for both of them. Yeah, so she'll get a different male and he'll get a different female until they get the right pair. All right, guys, we've been here for like an hour or so now, but it is midnight. These guys have gone out of their way to show us their farms just so we can fit it in with our schedule. This was the second floor, right? Second floor. Hold on, what's on the second floor? This is the special VIP room, and those are all free sold fish. This entire floor right here is flower horns that have already been sold. So those fish can't even be shown. They cannot be shown. Some people use them for competition and they don't like to show their fish. That's so interesting. All right, pretty insane, guys. It's so interesting learning about the entire world of flower horn breeding out here. Thailand is one of the biggest exporters of flower horn fish in the entire world, if not the biggest, probably next to Malaysia. All right, and the night continues. Now we've been invited to PA's house where he supposedly has a really small collection, but a very rare collection of flower horns. So nice, these guys like literally were taking up their night doing this. There's no family room, there's no living room. It's just, he's just basically built his entire house with things. These people, man, they're turning houses, apartments, any building into uh, a little fish. Anything's fair game. Here. So this is a fish box. Yeah. 
Here it is. Uh, yeah, dark one. This is my competition. <laughs> Uh, Dude, wait, what? What's going on with this? Why does it have the black spot? Uh, he's a gold-based fader, so it's fading. He's molting. He's molting. Flowerhorn fish molt? Yeah, so it starts off like this, and then it has a molting gene, which causes it to peel away, and then you get a, a red like this. For real, flowerhorn fish molt? They molt, yeah. Like crayfish, similarly? Pretty much, yeah. Why is my flowerhorn at home never molted? You don't have the gene. This one does. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't have the gene, man. Have gene, man. I didn't train mine hard enough. Are people going to think that's like rare no. for the competition, that he's got the black spot? No, it's, it's going to clear up by tomorrow. They're entering this fish into the show. He is a GB fader, which means gold base, and he's molting. Wow, this thing is sick, dude. This thing is super, super cool. Yeah, what's going to look like once he finishes molting? Uh, that black part is just going to go back to red? Yes. Which one's your favorite? Favorite fish? That one? This kid just picked out the, the actually the best one? That's a super red Texas. That's actually one of my favorites, too. This kid knows what's up. Okay, good talk. This is a super red Texas. Oh, that thing is so cool. The marbling on it is insane. Typical flower horns come red, and red is a sign of luck, health, and prosperity. Usually it's a Chinese tradition, and they somehow created confas out of them. It's about 15% that come out perfect. So this is why confas are so hard to get and so expensive. Something like this goes from between 145 to 500. But because the pearls does not cross the base, but everything else is perfect, I set it at like 300 for the fish. Wow. Is your favorite fish? Why is this your favorite that fish? Red one. That red one. The one in the back? Oh, yeah. he likes the blood parrot. He likes the parrot fish. Yeah, you He's like the blood parrot better than the red Texas? I like the red Texas. You like the red Texas. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. We had to cut it short a little bit because it is midnight and uh, these guys got to go to bed. Thank you guys for showing us the farm. This entire building is absolutely amazing. I think it could be in like the top seven wonders of the aquarium world. Mr. Peapot, amazing yes. farm. Dude, thank you thank so you much for, for showing us inside in PA. Thanks yeah. for bringing us out here. You are the man. man. These two guys are two of the godfathers in the flower horn breeding community here in Thailand. Feel really lucky to have been able to have this opportunity. If you guys are interested in buying flower horns that are bred here, I'll leave a link to Mr. Peapot's to his farm, his Facebook page, his Instagram, or his website. If you're interested in learning more about flower horn breeding, we also have another video that goes into more detail about how these guys breed the flower horn, so I'll also link that below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel so that other people get the chance to see this. We'll see you in the next one, but until then, remember to keep those nitrates low. George.